Welcome to section 8.4b. All right, gentle people, we're going to first start out with taking a little quiz. I want you guys to tell me which of the following solutions has a better buffer capacity. And by buffer capacity, what I mean is which of these solutions is more likely to resist the change in pH. Okay, general people, what you will see is that both of these things are made out of a weak something and its conjugate, HA being my weak acid, and then A minus being the conjugate of that weak acid. But the only thing I changed was the amounts. So this is what's going to be the important bit here. The more stuff you have, the greater the buffer capacity is going to be. Because the way a buffer works is it's going to convert a strong something into a weak something. And that means the more of the buffer components you have, the more it can convert that strong something into a weak something. So this is the first consideration in making a buffer. Now, when you get into a research lab, one of the things that they might want you to do is make a buffer. So remember, when you make a buffer, you need to use significant amounts of both your weak entity and your conjugate. And it doesn't matter if you're doing it with a weak acid or a weak base, make sure you have enough of this in there to buffer your solution. The next thing you have to consider when making a buffer solution for a research lab is where you want to buffer your solution. What is the pH that you want to keep your solutions around? So here's what we're going to do. I want to go ahead and make a buffer at a carbonic acid. And here's the pKa of carbonic acid, 6.37. So what I want you guys to figure out is I want to make a buffer such that my pH of my solution is around 7. I want you guys to tell me is how much carbonic acid should I use and how much sodium bicarb, the conjugate of that, should I use. So let's go ahead and run through this calculation. So I'm going to start out with my Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So pH equals pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. So I know that I want to have this solution around pH 7. So I'm going to put 7 right there. I told you the pKa was 6.37. And then I'm going to add plus log of A minus over HA. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and subtract both sides with 6.37. So I get 0 0.63 equals the log of A minus over HA. I can take the anti-log of both sides. And what I end up with is 4.27 and A minus over HA. So if we're going to look at how we're making our buffer, I asked you to make it out of carbonic acid. And I told you guys to use sodium bicarb. And so that's going to produce the conjugate, the bicarb ion. And so this is the ratio that I want to use. So what this means is that for every one mole of carbonic acid, I want to use 4.27 moles of HCO3 minus, or that sodium bicarb. And so that's what I'm going to do when I get into lab. I'm going to go ahead and measure these amounts. I'm going to make sure that ratio is there. And then I'm going to chuck it into solution and I'll get a pH around seven. And that means I can do my experiment without having to worry about pH. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the polyprotic acids. There's a couple of sections in your book devoted to polyprotic acids, and I don't want you guys to know them. They give complicated experiments and stuff like that in equations. So here's what I want you guys to know. We can have a polyprotic acid. And what I mean by a polyprotic acid is I have something like H2SO3. If you look at this compound, it has two hydrogens or two H pluses that can come off. And so here's what I want you to know about polyprotic acids. And that is that when I do a titration, I'm going to titrate one of these hydrogens completely off. And then I'm going to worry about the second one. So what I mean by that is that if I add OH minus, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and make HSO3 minus plus H2O. 
And once I've converted all of this to this, then I'm going to take that HSO3 minus. Then and only then do I start taking off that second hydrogen. So if you think about this, what I'm really doing is I'm doing one pH curve followed by another pH curve. So we can envision our pH curves. And what I said is if you guys wanted to titrate a weak acid with a strong base, what you would get is something like that. So what you're gonna do with a polyprotic acid is you're gonna tack on another curve after you finish your first curve. So you can put another thing right after the first one. And so what you guys have are two equivalence points one removing the first hydrogen, the second one removing the second hydrogen. And you guys can see that in this graph here. Here's my first pH curve, and you guys can see my first equivalence point. And then what you guys will see is that I have a second curve right here with a second equivalence point right on there. So this is the only thing that I want you guys to know about polyprotic acids. Don't worry about calculating pHs or using those crazy big equations that they give you. All right, gentle people, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1B.